In the vast, open plains where the wind whispers through the tall grasses, there is a presence that has always been there. A force that moves through every gust of wind, every breath of air, and every heartbeat. This is the great spirit, Wakantanka, the sacred being that is neither seen nor touched, but always felt. In the traditions of the Lakota, Dakota, and Dakota people, Wakantanka is not just a name, it is the very fabric of life. The Lakota tell of Wakantanka as the creator of all things, the force that set the stars in the sky and made the earth bloom with life. But Wakantanka is not a distant creator, removed from the world. Wakantanka is everywhere, always present, guiding, protecting, and nurturing all living things. In every tree, in every river, in the mountains and the sky, Wakantanka lives. For the Lakota people, to speak of Wakantanka is to speak of something greater than words can hold. It is the spirit of the buffalo that gave them life, the strength of the eagle soaring high above the clouds, and the wisdom of the elders passed down from one generation to the next. Wakantanka is in the laughter of children, the warmth of the fire, and the embrace of the family. From the moment of birth, it is said that Wakantanka breathes life into each person, walking with them through every step they take. There is a belief that every person carries a piece of Wakantanka within their soul, connecting them to all things. No one is ever truly alone, for Wakantanka watches over them, a silent guardian who never leaves their side. When the sun rises, casting its golden light across the land, it is Wakantanka's light shining down, filling the world with warmth and hope. As the sun sets, and the sky fades to deep blues and purples, Wakantanka is there too, bringing peace and rest to the earth. Even in the darkest nights, when the stars twinkle like distant fires, Wakantanka's presence is felt, reminding the people that they are never forgotten. The Lakota people have long known that Wakantanka speaks, not with words, but through the wind, the water, the animals, and the earth itself. They say if you sit still, if you listen with your heart, you can hear the voice of Wakantanka in the rustling leaves, the flowing rivers, and the beating wings of the birds. It is a voice that comforts and guides, offering wisdom without speaking. Wakantanka does not judge or punish, but loves unconditionally. The people believe that when they stray from the right path, Wakantanka does not turn away, but waits patiently for them to return. This love is not one that is harsh or demanding. It is a gentle, quiet love that surrounds them at all times, whether they feel worthy of it or not. Among the Lakota, the stories of Wakantanka are told around the fire, under the starry sky, where the spirit world feels closest. Elders speak of the time before time, when Wakantanka breathed life into the universe. The stars were said to be Wakantanka's children, placed in the heavens to remind the people that they are never alone. The sky became a map, a way for people to navigate not only the earth, but their souls. Every living thing, every creature that roams the plains, every river that winds through the land is touched by Wakantanka's hand. When a warrior prays before a battle, they speak to Wakantanka, asking for strength and courage. When a mother cradles her newborn child, she whispers to Wakantanka for protection. In the quiet moments, when the world feels heavy, and the heart is burdened, the people turn to Wakantanka, trusting that this great spirit will lighten their load and help them find their way. The buffalo, which provided the Lakota with food, clothing, and shelter, was seen as a sacred gift from Wakantanka. Every part of the buffalo was used, nothing wasted, out of respect for the life that Wakantanka had given. The people knew that the buffalo's spirit was a reflection of Wakantanka's generosity, giving without asking for anything in return. When the hunters went out onto the plains, they did not see the buffalo as prey, but as a brother, sent by Wakantanka to sustain their lives. In return, they honored the buffalo's spirit, thanking Wakantanka for each gift of life. In times of hardship, when the crops failed, or sickness spread through the tribe, the people gathered in prayer, not to beg for Wakantanka's help, but to reconnect with the spirit that had always been with them. They knew that Wakantanka did not abandon them in their suffering, but walked with them, feeling their pain and sharing in their struggles. Even in death, Wakantanka's presence is strong. The Lakota believed that when a person dies, their spirit does not vanish into nothingness. Instead, it returns to Wakantanka, becoming part of the sacred circle of life once more. 
Death is not an end, but a return to the Great Spirit, a homecoming to the place where all things began. This belief gives comfort to those left behind, knowing that their loved ones are not lost, but held in the embrace of Wakantanka. In the moments between life and death, in the spaces between the seen and the unseen, Wakantanka is there, a quiet, constant force. For the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota people, Wakantanka is not just the creator of the world, it is the world. Every breath they take, every step they walk, every prayer they speak is touched by the hand of the Great Spirit. And through it all, Wakantanka remains unchanging, eternal, and filled with a love that knows no bounds. The earth beneath our feet is more than just soil and stone. It's alive, breathing in ways we may never fully understand. For the Native American tribes, Mother Earth is not simply the ground they walk on, she is the beating heart of all existence. She nurtures, she gives, she loves without hesitation. Every tree, every river, every mountain is a part of her, woven into a tapestry of life that sustains all living things. The tribes don't just see her as a source of food and water, they feel her as family, a mother who embraces them every day. The connection to Mother Earth begins the moment a child is born. As the baby is wrapped in blankets, the elders tell the story of the Earth, how she cradles all living things. The child's first cries are heard by her, their first breath is filled with her air. She is the source of all life, and they are taught from the beginning to honor her, to listen to her whispers in the wind and the songs of the birds. She speaks through the rustling leaves and the gentle flow of rivers, always reminding her children that they are loved and cared for. Each day, when the sun rises and casts its golden light across the land, it is seen as Mother Earth waking up. Her warmth spreads through the soil, into the roots of plants, and out into the air. The crops that grow, the animals that roam, everything is touched by her hand. The people understand that without her, there would be no life. They depend on her for food, shelter, and even medicine. But it is not a relationship of taking. It is a relationship built on love, respect, and gratitude. She gives, and they honor her by giving back in every way they can. When they plant seeds in the spring, it's more than just farming, it's an act of reverence. The seeds are placed gently in the soil, and a prayer is whispered, asking Mother Earth to accept them. The people know that it's her energy, her strength, that will turn those seeds into life. As the crops grow, they see her power at work, knowing she is feeding not just their bodies, but their spirits as well. In times of harvest, there is a feeling of deep thankfulness. Every year of corn, every fruit picked from the trees is a gift from her. They do not take more than they need, for to do so would be to harm the one who nurtures them. The people take what they need to survive, always leaving enough for the earth to heal and renew herself. This balance, this careful give and take, is at the heart of their relationship with Mother Earth. When the people gather for ceremonies, Mother Earth is always present. Her spirit is felt in the ground they stand on, the wind that cools their skin, and the fire that warms them. She is part of every ritual, whether it's a prayer for rain or a celebration of life. The drums they beat echo her heartbeat, and their voices lift in song to honor her. She is not distant, she is there with them, a living presence that fills them with strength and peace. The tribes have always known that Mother Earth provides more than just food and shelter. She also offers healing. The plants that grow from her soil are seen as gifts, medicines that can heal the body and soothe the spirit. When someone is sick, they turn to her, trusting in the herbs and roots she provides. The healers work with her, speaking to her as they gather the plants, asking for her blessing and using them. It is a relationship built on trust and respect, for they know that she gives them these gifts out of love. But the people also understand that Mother Earth can be fierce. She is gentle, but she is also powerful. The storms that roll across the plains, the fires that sweep through the forests, these are her ways of reminding her children of her strength. She is a mother who loves, but she is also one who demands respect. When the people see her anger in the form of lightning and thunder, they do not fear her. They know it is her way of restoring balance, of cleansing the earth so that new life can begin. Even in death, Mother Earth is there. 
When a person's time comes to return to the spirit world, they are laid to rest in her arms. The earth that gave them life now takes them back, holding them close once again. The people do not see this as an ending but as a continuation. Just as the seasons change, life too follows a cycle. Birth, growth, death, and rebirth, these are all part of Mother Earth's plan. And in this, the people find comfort, knowing that they are never truly gone, but will always be a part of her. There are moments, quiet and still, when the connection to Mother Earth feels strongest. When a person stands barefoot on the earth, feeling the soil between their toes, they can feel her heartbeat, steady and strong. When they sit by a river and watch the water flow, they feel her life-giving energy moving through them. In these moments, they understand that they are not separate from her, but part of her. Every breath they take, every step they walk, is shared with her. Mother Earth is more than just a provider. She is the source of life, the one who nurtures, heals, and protects. She is the ground beneath their feet, the air they breathe, and the water that sustains them. She is a mother in every sense, always there, always loving, always giving. And the people, in return, love her as they would their own mother, with gratitude, respect, and a deep understanding that without her, there would be nothing. She is the heartbeat of the world, the force that keeps all things in balance. And no matter how far her children may wander, they always return to her, knowing that in her embrace, they will find life, peace, and the strength to continue. The sky stretches endlessly above, a vast ocean of blue by day and a sea of stars by night. It watches over everything, constant and unwavering. To the Native American tribes, the sky is more than just a backdrop to the world below. It is Father Sky, the protector, the giver of wisdom and strength. Just as Mother Earth nurtures life, Father Sky watches over it, standing tall, offering guidance and shelter. In the early morning, when the first rays of sunlight break over the horizon, it feels as though Father Sky is waking up, casting his protective gaze over the land. The warmth of the sun is his touch, gentle yet strong, reminding all who walk the earth that they are never alone. He is there, always watching, always present. The clouds that drift across the sky are said to be his breath, soft and tender, moving across the world with purpose. When the sky is clear and the sun shines brightly, it is a sign of his strength and wisdom, a reminder to the people that all is well. But when the clouds grow dark, when thunder rumbles and lightning streaks across the sky, it is Father Sky's power that they feel. He is not angry, he is simply reminding the people of his presence, of the balance between strength and calm. For the tribes, Father Sky is not separate from Mother Earth, they are two parts of a whole, each playing their role in the cycle of life. While Mother Earth cradles and nurtures, Father Sky stands as a guardian, ensuring that the world below is protected. He is the shield that covers them, the strong arms that hold the world together. In every breeze, and every gust of wind, the people feel Father Sky's presence. He is the one who moves the air, who brings the rains to water the earth. Without him, the crops would wither, the rivers would dry, and the land would fall silent. It is through his strength that life continues, that the seasons change, that the world stays in motion. When the people look up to the sky, they do not see emptiness, they see a father who watches over them, a father who provides wisdom in the quiet moments. The stars that twinkle in the night are his eyes, always watching, always guiding. The people say that when they feel lost, when the path ahead seems unclear, they need only to look up. Father Sky will speak to them, not with words, but with the quiet understanding that comes from his presence. The eagle, soaring high above, is seen as a messenger of Father Sky. Its wings stretch wide, carrying the spirit of the sky wherever it goes. The people believe that when the eagle flies overhead, it is Father Sky sending them a message, offering them guidance or strength in times of need. The eagle's cry echoes across the land, a voice of power and wisdom, reminding the people that they are never far from his protection. When the storms come, with thunder crashing and lightning striking the earth, the people do not run in fear. They stand in awe of Father Sky's strength. The thunder is his voice, the lightning his mighty hand. It is a reminder of the balance between calm and power, between nurturing and protection. 
The rain that falls is not a punishment, but a gift from him, a way to quench the thirst of the land and ensure that life continues. The people know that Father Sky is always there, even when the storms pass and the skies return to their peaceful blue. In the stillness of a quiet night, when the stars shimmer like tiny sparks of light, they feel his wisdom. Each star has its place, just as each person has their role in life. Father Sky teaches them patience, that everything will come in its own time. There is no need to rush, for the stars always return, the sun always rises, and life always continues. The sun, too, is seen as Father Sky's strength, shining down on the world, offering warmth and light. It is the sun that allows the crops to grow, that warms the people's faces as they walk across the plains. The people know that without the sun, without Father Sky's light, there would be no life. They honor him by lifting their faces to the sun, feeling his warmth and thanking him for his strength. At night, when the world grows quiet and the moon rises, Father Sky's wisdom shines through. The moon, with its soft, gentle light, is seen as a symbol of his watchfulness. Even in the darkest of nights, when the world seems still and silent, Father Sky is there, offering guidance and protection. The people believe that the moon's light is a reminder that no matter how dark things may seem, there is always a way forward, always a light to guide them. The wind that moves through the trees, that whispers across the plains, is Father Sky's voice. It carries messages from one place to another, connecting the people with the world around them. When the wind picks up, swirling leaves and bending the grass, it is a sign of his strength. But even in the gentlest breeze, the people feel his presence, a constant reminder that they are never alone. In moments of silence, when the world seems still, the people look to Father Sky for guidance. They know that his wisdom is not always loud, sometimes it comes in the quiet moments, when the sky is clear and the world is calm. He teaches them patience, strength, and the importance of balance. Just as the sky shifts between calm and storm, so too must they find balance in their own lives. Father Sky is more than just the air above, he is the protector, the giver of strength and wisdom. He watches over all living things, from the smallest blade of grass to the tallest mountain. The people honor him with every breath they take, knowing that he is there, always watching, always guiding. They feel his strength in the warmth of the sun, his wisdom in the stars, and his protection in the wind that moves through their world. Father Sky is their guardian, their source of strength, and they carry him with them in their hearts every day. The sky darkens, heavy with the weight of a brewing storm. The air grows thick, and the wind whispers through the trees, carrying with it an ancient power that sends chills down your spine. In the distance, a low rumble echoes across the plains, growing louder with each passing second. Then, with a crack that shakes the earth, lightning splits the sky. The storm has arrived, and with it, the Thunderbirds. In the cultures of the Plains tribes, the Thunderbirds are not just a part of the storm, they are the storm. These massive, winged beings ride the winds, their wings beating with the force of a thousand storms, and their eyes flashing like bolts of lightning. They bring the rain that nourishes the earth, but they also bring justice, swift and fierce, to those who have wronged the world. The Thunderbirds are not just creatures of nature, they are powerful, supernatural forces, both feared and revered. The people speak of their massive wings, each beat creating thunder that rolls across the sky. With every strike of lightning, they are said to be wielding their power, reminding the world of their presence. Their eyes glow with the fire of the storm, and their cries pierce the air, a sound both terrifying and awe-inspiring. When the Thunderbirds are near, the people know that something important is about to happen. The storm is not just a storm, it is a warning, a sign from the spirits that balance must be restored. In the cultures of the Plains tribes, the Thunderbirds are protectors, watching over the people and the land, ensuring that justice is served. They are beings of immense power, called upon in times of great need. The people believe that when someone commits an act of great injustice, the Thunderbirds come. They arrive on the wings of a storm, their presence announced by the crack of thunder and the flash of lightning. Their wrath is swift, striking down those who have harmed the land or its people. But their justice is not cruel, it is necessary. They are not vengeful, they are protectors, keeping the balance of the world intact. 
In many stories, the Thunderbirds are said to have fought great battles with evil forces, using the power of the storm to vanquish their foes. Their lightning strikes not just as a weapon, but as a way to cleanse the earth of darkness. When the Thunderbirds fight, the sky lights up with their power, and the world trembles beneath their wings. They are unstoppable, a force of nature that no one can control. Yet, despite their terrifying power, the Thunderbirds are also bringers of life. The rain they call forth nourishes the earth, bringing life to the plains and ensuring the survival of the people. After the storm passes, the land is refreshed, and the people know that the Thunderbirds have done their work. The crops grow, the rivers flow, and life continues, all thanks to the power of these supernatural beings. The people understand that the Thunderbirds are not to be trifled with. Their power is both a blessing and a curse, depending on how they are called upon. The storm they bring can be destructive, but it is also necessary for life. It is a reminder that the world is fragile, that balance must be maintained, and that justice must always prevail. In some tales, the Thunderbirds take on human form, appearing as wise and powerful leaders who guide the people through difficult times. They offer wisdom, but they also demand respect. The people know that the Thunderbirds see everything, that their eyes are always watching, and that they will not hesitate to bring justice when it is needed. Their presence is a constant reminder of the power that lies just beyond the horizon, waiting to be unleashed. When a storm rolls in, the people do not cower in fear, they watch in awe, knowing that they are witnessing something sacred. The Thunderbirds are not just a part of their world, they are the very essence of the storm, the embodiment of nature's power and justice. The people tell stories of seeing their great wings spread across the sky, of feeling the ground shake beneath their feet as the Thunderbirds fly overhead. Even in the calm after the storm, the people feel their presence. The rain-soaked earth is a gift from the Thunderbirds, a reminder that life continues because of their power. The wind that blows gently through the grass carries the echo of their wings, a quiet reminder that they are always near, always watching. The Thunderbirds' legacy is one of power and justice, but also of life and renewal. They are the storm, but they are also the rain that follows. They bring destruction, but they also bring life. The people honor them, knowing that without the Thunderbirds, the world would fall out of balance. They are the guardians of the land, the protectors of justice, and the bringers of life. The next time the sky darkens and the wind begins to howl, the people will look up, waiting for the first crack of thunder, knowing that the Thunderbirds are near. They will feel the power of the storm, the weight of the air, and they will remember the stories of old, the tales of these mighty beings who rule the skies and bring balance to the world. The Thunderbirds are not just legends, they are real, and their presence is felt in every storm that rolls across the plains. The land lay barren, cracked under the weight of a long, unforgiving drought. The people stood silently, their eyes cast to the dry fields, where not a single green shoot dared to grow. Hunger gnawed at their bellies, but even deeper than hunger was the sense of hopelessness that had settled over them like dust. In times like these, they knew where to turn. They whispered her name softly, as though afraid to disturb the still air, Corn Mother. The story of the Corn Mother is one that pulses in the hearts of many Native American peoples. She is not just a figure of myth, she is life itself. The Corn Mother is the provider, the nurturer, the one who gives so that her children may live. Through her sacrifice, the people find their sustenance, and through her love, the earth is blessed with abundance. The legend says that in the beginning, when the earth was new, the corn mother walked among the people. She was not like them, she carried within her the essence of life, the power to bring forth the food that would sustain them for generations to come. Her steps were soft, but everywhere she went, life followed. The people loved her for her kindness, for her wisdom, and for the way she always gave without asking for anything in return. But the land was harsh, and the people were struggling. They looked to the corn mother, hoping she would provide the miracle they needed. She saw their suffering, and her heart broke for them. She knew what had to be done, and though the cost would be great, her love for her people was greater still. In one version of the story, the corn mother sat down with the elders, her voice quiet yet filled with a strength that came from the earth itself. She told them that in order for the people to survive, she must sacrifice herself. 
The elders, shocked and saddened, begged her not to go through with it, but the corn mother's resolve was unshakable. She knew that through her death, new life would spring forth. The next day, the corn mother vanished, her body becoming one with the earth. Where she had lain, the soil softened, and from it, green shoots began to rise. Corn, beans, and squash, what would later be called the Three Sisters, grew from the ground, feeding the people and bringing them back from the brink of starvation. The corn mother had given herself completely, and through her sacrifice, the cycle of life continued. There are other versions of the story, but the message remains the same. The corn mother is more than just a giver of food, she is the embodiment of sacrifice and love. She reminds the people that the earth will always provide if treated with respect, and that life comes not just from taking, but from giving. Year after year, as the corn grew tall in the fields, the people would gather to honor the corn mother. They would give thanks for her endless generosity, for the way she nourished not only their bodies, but their spirits as well. The cycles of planting and harvest became more than just a way of life, they were a sacred act, a continuation of the corn mother's gift. The corn, itself, became a symbol of life. Every kernel was a reminder of the corn mother's sacrifice, of the love she had for her people. And in every harvest, the people saw the cycle of life and death, of giving and receiving, play out before them. The corn mother had taught them that life was not something to be taken for granted, but something to be cherished and honored. In some tribes, the story goes even further. It is said that after her sacrifice, the corn mother did not disappear entirely. When the people sat down to share their meals, her spirit was there with them, and every bite of corn, every sip of water. She lived on through the food that sustained them, a constant presence in their lives. Her spirit was in the soil, in the rain that watered the crops, in the sun that warmed the earth. She was always with them, always watching over them. As the generations passed, the corn mother's story was passed down from one to the next. Mothers told it to their children as they worked the fields, as they prepared the meals that would sustain their families. The children learned not only the importance of the crops, but also the deeper lesson of the corn mother's sacrifice. They learned that to live was to give, and that life itself was a precious gift. The people did not forget. Every year, during the harvest, they would remember the corn mother's sacrifice. They would gather together, not just to celebrate the bounty of the earth, but to honor the spirit of the one who had given everything for them. The cornfields, golden and heavy with grain, were a living testament to her love. And even in times of hardship, when the crops did not grow, and the people feared that they would once again face hunger, they remembered her story. They knew that the earth, like the corn mother, would provide in time. They trusted in the cycles of life, in the rhythms of the earth that she had shown them. The corn mother was more than a figure in a story, she was life itself. She was the whisper in the wind, the warmth of the sun, the nourishment of the earth. Through her, the people learned to live in harmony with the land, to respect the cycles of life and death, to give as well as receive. And so, as the people sat down to eat, they gave thanks not just for the food on their plates, but for the one who had made it all possible. The corn mother lived on, in every meal, in every field, in every act of love and sacrifice. In the quiet of the desert night, when the stars shine like a thousand watching eyes, there's a sound that echoes across the vast emptiness. It's a laugh, a sly and knowing laugh, belonging to no one else but Coyote. His presence is felt in the dry winds that sweep through the land, in the whispers of the ancient rocks, and in the endless stories told by the elders around the fire. Coyote, the trickster, never comes quietly. He dances between chaos and wisdom, leaving his mark on every heart that dares to listen. Coyote is no ordinary figure. He is the one who turns the world upside down, the one whose tricks and pranks seem like foolishness at first, but always reveal something deeper. He is the chaos that disrupts order, but through that chaos, there is growth. He is the one who reminds the people that even in the most confusing of moments, there is wisdom to be found. One tale tells of how Coyote stole fire from the gods. The world was cold, and the people were suffering without warmth, huddling in the darkness. Coyote, with his sharp wit and restless spirit, knew that something had to be done. 
but fire was not his to take. It was guarded fiercely by the gods, hidden away on the highest mountain. No one had dared to challenge them, but Coyote was not like others. Fear did not hold him back. He crept through the night, his paws barely touching the ground as he approached the sacred fire. The gods, confident in their power, had left it unguarded, certain that no one would dare approach. But they had not counted on Coyote's cunning. He snatched the fire, holding it carefully in his mouth, and ran faster than the wind down the mountain, his heart racing with both the thrill of the trick and the urgency of his mission. The gods awoke in fury, chasing him with all their might, but Coyote was too quick. With every step, he laughed that familiar, mischievous laugh, knowing that he had outwitted them once again. He brought the fire to the people, and for the first time, they felt warmth. Coyote had brought chaos to the gods, but in doing so, he had gifted the people with something they could not have survived without. His mischief, as reckless as it seemed, had a purpose. It was this balance between troublemaking and wisdom that made Coyote so beloved and so feared. He was the hero who never followed the rules, but somehow, he always knew what the people needed most. In other stories, Coyote's tricks are not so well-intentioned. He plays pranks that cause confusion, sometimes even harm. He is the one who tries to outsmart others, only to find himself caught in his own trap. There's the tale of how Coyote tried to catch a fish by sticking his tail in a frozen lake, boasting to everyone about how clever he was. But as the hours passed and the ice thickened, Coyote found himself stuck, frozen to the spot. His cries for help were met with laughter from those who had watched him, and Coyote, ever the fool, learned that even the cleverest tricksters can sometimes be outwitted. Yet even in these moments of failure, there is something to be learned. Coyote's mistakes, his blunders, teach humility. They show that even those who think they are the smartest can be brought down by their own arrogance. The people laugh at Coyote's foolishness, but they also see themselves in him. He is a reflection of the human spirit, curious, reckless, sometimes wise, and sometimes foolish. His stories carry the weight of generations, each one a reminder that life is full of both chaos and wisdom, and often, the two are intertwined. For the Navajo, Hopi, and many other tribes, Coyote is not just a character in a story, he is a living presence. His spirit moves through the land, always watching, always waiting for the next opportunity to stir things up. The people know that when Coyote is near, something unexpected is about to happen. He brings both laughter and tears, joy and frustration, but most importantly, he brings change. Through his tricks, the world is never the same, and neither are those who encounter him. In one famous tale, Coyote decides that death should not be permanent. He argues that people should die, but after a few days, they should come back to life, just as plants do in the spring. He believes this is the way things should be, but he doesn't stop to consider the consequences. When his suggestion is met with resistance, he grows angry and, in a fit of rage, kicks a stone into the river, declaring that from now on, death will be final. The people mourn, knowing that Coyote's impulsiveness has sealed their fate, but they also understand that death, like life, is part of the great balance. Coyote's stories are filled with lessons, but they are not simple lessons. They are messy, just like life itself. There is no clear line between right and wrong in his tales. He is both a hero and a fool, both wise and reckless. He teaches the people that life is not about perfection, but about embracing the chaos, finding the lessons hidden in the trickery, and laughing even in the face of hardship. And so, when the people sit around the fire at night, telling the old stories, they speak of Coyote with both reverence and amusement. They know that his presence is always near, that he could appear at any moment with a new trick up his sleeve. His laughter, echoing through the night, reminds them that life is unpredictable, that wisdom often comes wrapped in the most unexpected packages, and that sometimes, the only way to move forward is to embrace the chaos. In the quiet of the desert, under the soft glow of the setting sun, the wind whispers through the canyons, telling stories as old as time. It is here, in the stillness of the land, that Spider-Woman spins her invisible web, connecting everything in the universe. Her presence is subtle, yet unbreakable, woven into the hearts of the people. 
She is the guardian, the creator, the one who watches over, guiding every step with care and love. Spider-Woman isn't just a figure of myth, she is the heartbeat of life itself. They say that Spider-Woman weaves her web of life with such delicacy, but her threads are strong. Each strand is a connection between the earth and the sky, the plants and the animals, and most importantly, between humans and their spirit. The Hopi and Navajo people know her well, for she is the one who taught them how to live, how to survive in a world full of challenges. Her web is the map that leads them, offering protection and wisdom as they walk through the complexities of existence. In the beginning, there was nothing but the void, vast and silent. It was Spider-Woman who, with gentle hands, wove the first web of creation, pulling the threads of the universe together. She shaped the stars, the mountains, and the rivers with her delicate touch, breathing life into the world with every movement. But she did not stop there. Spider-Woman knew that humans, fragile and curious, would need guidance, a hand to hold as they found their place in this new world. One by one, she taught the people how to make baskets, how to plant seeds, how to honor the land they walked on. With her wisdom, they learned to respect the earth, to live in harmony with it. Spider-Woman's lessons weren't given through words, but through actions, through the quiet wisdom that came from watching her work. The people learned to weave just as she did, each basket a symbol of their connection to her and to the earth. But Spider-Woman's greatest gift was her protection. She didn't just create the world, she safeguarded it. When danger loomed, when the people faced threats they could not understand, Spider-Woman was there, her web strong enough to shield them. She didn't fight with force, but with her wisdom, her ability to see beyond the present moment and understand the deeper meaning behind every event. There's a story that tells of a time when the people were lost, wandering in confusion and fear. They had forgotten Spider-Woman's teachings, and in their forgetfulness, they became disconnected from the land and from each other. The world grew dark, and the people were afraid. But Spider-Woman never abandoned them. She appeared to a young girl in the middle of the night, her eyes filled with warmth and compassion. Follow my thread, she said, handing the girl a single strand of her web. The girl, unsure but trusting, held the thread tightly and began to walk. The thread led her through the darkness, guiding her safely past every danger. With each step, the girl felt a sense of peace, knowing that Spider-Woman was with her. By morning, she had reached the edge of the canyon, where the rest of her people waited. She shared the thread with them, and together, they found their way back to Spider-Woman's teachings, back to the balance they had lost. Spider-Woman's web is not just a symbol of creation, but of connection. Every life is a thread in her vast web, each one important, each one holding up the others. When one thread is broken, the web weakens, but when the people remember to care for each other, to honor the land and the life within it, the web becomes stronger than ever. Even today, the Hopi and Navajo people speak of Spider-Woman with reverence. Her stories are passed down through generations, her wisdom woven into every aspect of life. She is there in the weaving of baskets, in the planting of crops, in the careful way the people interact with the world around them. Her presence is felt in every moment of creation, in every act of care and protection. But Spider-Woman is not just a gentle guide, she is also a teacher of difficult lessons. Her web reminds the people that life is fragile, that every action has a consequence. To pull too hard on one thread is to risk tearing the whole web apart. The people know that they must be careful, that they must live with intention, always mindful of the connections that bind them to the earth, to the sky, and to each other. In one story, a man grew arrogant, believing that he could control the web, that he could bend it to his will. He tried to cut the threads, thinking he could create his own path. But Spider-Woman's web is not meant to be manipulated. As the man severed the strands, the world around him began to crumble. The crops withered, the animals disappeared, and soon, he found himself alone in a barren wasteland. Only then did he realize his mistake. He fell to his knees, calling out to Spider-Woman, begging for her forgiveness. Spider-Woman, with her infinite compassion, answered his cries. She appeared before him, her face calm but serious. The web is not yours to control, she said, her voice steady. It is a gift, and it must be respected. 
With a gentle touch, she began to repair the web, her fingers moving with precision and care. As she worked, the world around the man began to heal, the plants grew green again, the animals returned, and life was restored. The man, humbled, vowed never to forget the lesson Spider-Woman had taught him. Spider-Woman's wisdom is timeless. She teaches that life is not about control, but about connection. She reminds the people that they are part of something greater than themselves, that their actions affect not just their own lives, but the lives of those around them. Through her web, she guides them, offering protection, wisdom, and love. And in return, the people honor her, weaving their own lives with care, knowing that they are part of her endless creation. In the vast plains of the Lakota people, where the wind sings across the grasslands and the sky seems to stretch forever, there is a story so sacred that it lives in the hearts of all who hear it. The white buffalo calf woman, her name is spoken with reverence, for she is not just a figure of legend, but a gift from the spirit world, sent to guide, teach, and heal. One day, as two young Lakota men were out hunting, they saw a figure in the distance. At first, they thought it was an animal, but as they moved closer, their hearts began to race. She was unlike anything they had ever seen. Wrapped in pure white, her skin glowed, and her hair flowed like black rivers down her back. She was beautiful, but her presence carried more than just beauty. It was filled with a sense of awe, of something otherworldly. This was no ordinary woman. This was the white buffalo calf woman, sent from the heavens with a message. One of the men, unable to contain his desire, thought to approach her with selfish intent. But as he reached out, the white buffalo calf woman's eyes met his, and in an instant, he was struck down. His body turned to bones, as if time itself had sped up and consumed him. The other man, now trembling, fell to his knees, his heart filled with humility and fear. The white buffalo calf woman looked upon him with kindness. Rise, she said softly, her voice carrying the weight of the winds and the wisdom of the stars. The man obeyed, his legs shaky beneath him, but his soul calm. She spoke to him, not with words, but with the essence of the earth itself. She told him that she had come to bring a gift to the Lakota people, a gift that would guide them, connect them to the spirits, and show them how to live in harmony with the world around them. The white buffalo calf woman handed him the sacred pipe. It was not just an object, it was a symbol, a bridge between the people and the great spirit. Through this pipe, she said, you will send your prayers to the heavens, and the smoke will carry your words. But you must use it with respect. You must honor the earth, the sky, and all living beings, for everything is connected. She taught him the way to offer prayers, the way to honor the buffalo, the land, and the sacred circle of life. The pipe would become a powerful tool of peace, a way for the people to communicate not only with the spirits, but with each other. Through it, they would find unity, not only within themselves, but with all that exists around them. The man returned to his people with the pipe, and as he shared the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman, the Lakota were forever changed. They understood that life was not a battle to be won, but a balance to be kept. The earth was not something to be conquered, but something to live with, to respect and cherish. But the white buffalo calf woman's teachings went beyond the pipe. She taught the Lakota the ways of the four-legged, the winged ones, and the crawling creatures. She spoke of the importance of every tree, every river, every mountain. She reminded them that they were not separate from the world around them, but a part of it. The buffalo, in particular, was sacred, for it gave its life so that the people might live. It was a symbol of abundance, generosity, and sacrifice. And through the buffalo, the Lakota learned the meaning of gratitude. Her message wasn't just for the moment, it was timeless, echoing through generations. The Lakota people learned to walk softly on the earth, to treat the land with the care it deserved. They began to see every sunrise as a gift, every breeze as a reminder of the connection they shared with all living things. The white buffalo calf woman had not just given them spiritual practices, she had given them a way of life, a path to follow with honor and dignity. Years passed, but the memory of the white buffalo calf woman remained strong. And then, one day, as mysteriously as she had come, she disappeared. As she left the people, she transformed into a white buffalo calf, her body shimmering in the sunlight. 
The buffalo is a rare and sacred creature, and its appearance was seen as a sign of hope, a reminder that the white buffalo calf woman would always be with them, watching, guiding, protecting. Even today, the Lakota and many other Native American tribes hold the white buffalo calf woman in their hearts. When the white buffalo is born, it is considered a miracle, a message from the spirit world. It is said that when the white buffalo walks the earth again, it will be a time of great healing, a time when the people will return to the ways of peace and balance. Her teachings continue to resonate, not just with the Lakota, but with anyone who listens. The white buffalo calf woman's message is simple yet profound, respect the earth, honor the life within it, and walk in harmony with all that is. She reminds us that peace begins with understanding, that we are all connected, and that through this connection, we find strength, wisdom, and purpose. As the smoke of the sacred pipe rises to the sky, curling and drifting into the heavens, it carries with it the prayers of the people, their hopes, their fears, their gratitude. The white buffalo calf woman hears them all, and though she may not walk the earth in flesh, her spirit remains as strong and as constant as the wind that moves through the plains. The eagle soars above, its wings spread wide, cutting through the sky like an arrow. There's something about the way it moves, effortless, graceful, yet powerful. For generations, Native American tribes have looked to this majestic bird with deep reverence, understanding that the eagle is not just another creature of the earth. It carries with it messages from the heavens, bridging the gap between humans and the spiritual world. To many, the eagle represents strength, freedom, and wisdom. But to the native people, it's more than a symbol. It's a living messenger, chosen by the Great Spirit to carry prayers and thoughts from the earth to the sky. Every time the eagle ascends into the clouds, it is said to be delivering the hopes, dreams, and whispers of the people to the Creator. When its powerful wings beat against the air, it's as though they're echoing the heartbeat of the earth itself. In the old stories passed down from elders, the eagle's ability to fly higher than any other creature is no accident. The creator gave the eagle this gift so that it could see beyond what others could, witnessing both the beauty and suffering of the world from its lofty perch. This gift made the eagle the perfect messenger between the mortal world and the spiritual realm. It flies closer to the sun, closer to the creator, touching a place that no other being dares to reach. When an eagle feather is found, it's never taken lightly. It's not just a feather, it's a sacred object, a piece of the spirit world itself. To hold an eagle feather is to hold a connection to the creator. It's treated with the utmost respect, often used in ceremonies, prayers, and rituals. The feather is believed to carry the spirit of the eagle, and through it, one can communicate with the great spirit more directly. It's as if the feather becomes a conduit, channeling the energy and wisdom of the eagle. The eagle is also a guardian, watching over the people from the skies. It protects, not through force, but by its mere presence. Its keen eyes miss nothing, seeing both the physical and the spiritual. In times of danger or great need, the sight of an eagle flying overhead is seen as a sign that the people are being watched, that they are not alone. The eagle's eyes are always on them, ensuring that the connection to the spiritual world remains unbroken. In some tribes, it's believed that the eagle has the ability to transform. It can become human when needed, descending to earth to walk among the people, offering guidance or delivering important messages. Those who are lucky enough to encounter such a being often speak of a profound sense of peace and understanding. They say that the eagle speaks without words, its presence alone carrying the weight of its wisdom. But the eagle's role isn't just to deliver messages from the spiritual world to humans. It also carries the prayers of the people back to the Creator. During ceremonies, when prayers are spoken and the smoke of the sacred fire rises to the sky, the eagle is there, gathering the prayers in its wings. With every flap, it takes those prayers higher and higher until they reach the heavens. It's believed that the Creator listens more closely to the words carried by the eagle, trusting its judgment and its dedication to the people. For the Native American tribes, the eagle teaches an important lesson. It shows that true strength is not found in aggression or dominance, but in wisdom and connection. The eagle flies alone, yet it is never lonely. It moves with purpose, its eyes always looking forward, never distracted. 
The people see this as a reminder to live with intention, to seek wisdom, and to stay connected to the world around them, both seen and unseen. The eagle also represents balance. It flies between the earth and the sky, living in both realms, but belonging to neither. It understands the struggles of those on the ground, yet it also knows the peace of the heavens. In this way, it teaches the people the importance of balance in their own lives. They are reminded to stay grounded, to care for the earth and its creatures, but also to look up, to seek guidance from the spiritual world, and to keep their hearts and minds open to the messages that come from above. In some traditions, warriors wore eagle feathers as a sign of honor and bravery. These feathers were not given lightly, they were earned through acts of courage and service to the tribe. To wear an eagle feather was to carry the spirit of the eagle with you, to embody its strength, its wisdom, and its grace. It was both a privilege and a responsibility, for those who wore the feathers were expected to live up to the ideals that the eagle represented. Even in death, the eagle remains a sacred figure. When an eagle dies, it's believed that its spirit continues to watch over the people, flying through the spirit world just as it once flew through the skies. Its feathers and bones are treated with the same reverence as when it was alive, often buried in special ceremonies or kept as sacred objects. The eagle's spirit, it is said, never truly leaves. It continues to guide, protect, and carry messages between the worlds, even after its physical form is gone. The eagle's call, that piercing cry that echoes across the land, is a sound that stirs the soul. It's as if the spirit world is speaking directly through the eagle's voice, reminding the people of their connection to something greater, something infinite. When that call is heard, the people stop and listen, for they know that it carries meaning, that it is a reminder of the sacred bond they share with the eagle and the creator. And so, the eagle remains a symbol of hope, wisdom, and protection. It is a reminder that, no matter how far the people may wander, they are always watched over, always connected to the spirit world. The eagle, with its wings outstretched and its heart full of purpose, continues to fly, carrying the prayers of the people to the heavens and returning with the wisdom of the great spirit. In the quiet of the forest, when the world seems to hold its breath, a figure moves with a grace that is both mesmerizing and haunting. This is the dear woman, a spirit of paradox, embodying both the beauty and peril of nature. With her deer-like form, she glides through the underbrush, a vision of elegance that hides a deeper mystery. The dear woman is a figure of transformation. She appears in many Native American stories as a symbol of fertility and renewal, a living embodiment of the cycle of life. Her presence is a reminder of the delicate balance between life and death, growth and decay. In some tales, she brings blessings of fertility, helping crops to grow and ensuring the continuity of life. Her touch can make the earth fertile, making her a revered figure for those who depend on the land for sustenance. Yet, the dear woman's beauty is not without danger. She is as much a symbol of seduction as she is of nurturing. Her appearance, with the graceful legs of a deer and the allure of a woman, can captivate anyone who crosses her path. Many stories speak of her ability to enchant and ensnare those who fall under her spell. Her eyes, deep and shimmering with an otherworldly light, can draw in even the most wary, luring them into a trap of their own making. The stories of the dear woman are filled with both awe and caution. To encounter her is to face the duality of nature itself. The same force that brings life can also bring danger. The dear woman represents the wildness of the forest, a reminder that nature is both beautiful and unpredictable. She embodies the truth that every blessing comes with its own set of challenges. In the tales where she is a force of danger, her seduction is not just a matter of physical allure, but a test of character. Those who are drawn to her are often confronted with their own desires and weaknesses. The dear woman's allure forces them to face their own inner conflicts, revealing their true selves. In this way, she serves as both a mirror and a lesson, teaching that the most beautiful things can also be the most dangerous. Her connection to fertility is deeply intertwined with her role as a seductress. In many cultures, fertility is seen not just as a physical ability, but as a profound, almost magical force. The dear woman embodies this force, her presence a potent reminder of the power and mystery of creation. 
when she blesses the land or the people, it is as though the very essence of life is being renewed. Yet, when her power is misused or misunderstood, the consequences can be severe, reflecting the complexity of nature itself. The Dear Woman stories are told with a mixture of reverence and caution. Elders speak of her with respect, acknowledging her power and the need to approach her with humility. They remind listeners that while she can bring great gifts, she also demands respect and understanding. The Dear Woman is a figure who teaches that life's greatest gifts are often accompanied by trials, and that wisdom comes from recognizing and respecting the balance of these forces. In some tales, the Dear Woman is a guardian of the forest, protecting it from those who would harm it. Her presence in these stories serves as a reminder that nature has its own defenders and that the land should be treated with respect and care. Her transformation from a beautiful woman into a deer can be seen as a way of showing that she is intimately connected with the forest and its well-being. When her story is shared around the fire, there is often a hush as the tale unfolds. Listeners are captivated by the image of the deer woman, her elegance and mystery stirring something deep within them. Her presence is a reminder of the power and unpredictability of nature and the importance of living in harmony with it. The stories evoke a deep sense of awe and respect, acknowledging the Dear Woman's role as both a giver of life and a force of transformation. The Dear Woman's ability to transform is a central part of her myth. She moves between the world of humans and the world of animals, embodying the fluidity of existence. Her transformations serve as a powerful symbol of change, reflecting the ever-changing nature of life itself. To see her is to witness the seamless blend of beauty and danger, a reminder that life is full of contrasts and that understanding these contrasts is key to navigating the world. In the quiet moments when the forest seems to hold its breath, the presence of the dear woman is felt even if she is not seen. Her stories linger in the air, a reminder of the complex relationship between humans and the natural world. She is both a blessing and a challenge, embodying the richness and depth of life's mysteries. The dear woman, with her graceful movements and enigmatic presence, continues to captivate and inspire, reminding all who hear her story of the delicate balance between creation and destruction, beauty and peril. In the heart of the ancient forests, where the wind whispers through the leaves and the rivers murmur over stones, there lies a presence that touches everything, the Manitou. This name, rich with meaning, is not just a word but a gateway into a world where every element of nature is alive with spirit. For the Algonquian-speaking tribes, Manitou represents a profound belief that all things, from the tiniest pebble to the towering trees, are imbued with sacred spirit forces. The concept of Manitou is woven deeply into the spiritual fabric of these tribes. It is a way of understanding that the world around us is not just a backdrop for human life, but a living, breathing entity filled with purpose and meaning. To encounter Manitou is to feel the pulse of the earth, to recognize that every gust of wind, every ray of sunlight, every ripple in the water carries with it a whisper of the divine. In the Algonquian belief system, the Manitou is present in all elements of nature. The trees are not merely wood and leaves, they are alive with spirit, their branches reaching out as if to embrace the sky. The rivers and lakes are more than sources of water, they are the veins of the earth, flowing with the essence of life. Even the stones beneath our feet are sacred, holding the memories and wisdom of the land. Each element of nature is a reflection of Manitou, a reminder of the deep connection between the physical and spiritual worlds. The reverence for Manitou guides many aspects of daily life and spiritual practice. Tribes conduct rituals and ceremonies to honor these spirits, recognizing their role in maintaining balance and harmony in the world. Offerings are made to the spirits of the land, thanking them for their gifts and seeking their guidance. These acts of devotion are not mere traditions, but expressions of a profound respect for the interconnectedness of all life. One of the most touching aspects of the Manitou belief is how it fosters a deep sense of gratitude and humility. The Algonquian tribes understand that their existence is intertwined with the spirits of the natural world. They recognize that their lives are sustained by the earth and its elements, and they respond with acts of reverence and care. This sense of gratitude is a powerful force, shaping their interactions with nature and guiding their spiritual practices. Manitou is not just an abstract concept, but a living, dynamic presence. 
The spirits are seen as active participants in the world, influencing events and guiding people. In times of need, individuals turn to the Manitou for guidance and support, seeking their wisdom to navigate life's challenges. The connection with these spirits is deeply personal, a relationship built on respect, trust, and mutual understanding. The stories and legends of the Algonquian tribes often center around the Manitou, depicting their interactions with humans and the lessons they impart. These tales are filled with a sense of wonder and reverence, capturing the essence of the spirits and their role in the world. Through these stories, the tribes pass down their understanding of the Manitou and their reverence for the natural world. In the quiet moments, when the world seems to pause and listen, the presence of Manitou is felt strongly. The rustling of leaves, the whisper of the wind, the gentle lapping of water, all are reminders of the spirits that inhabit the world. For those who are attuned to these forces, the experience is both humbling and uplifting. It is a reminder that life is a continuous interplay between the seen and the unseen, the physical and the spiritual. To understand the Manitou is to see the world through a different lens, one where every element of nature is alive with purpose and meaning. It is a way of connecting deeply with the earth and its spirits, recognizing the sacredness of all things. This understanding shapes the way the Algonquian-speaking tribes live and interact with their environment, guiding their spiritual practices and daily life. The concept of Manitou is a profound testament to the wisdom of the Algonquian tribes and their deep connection to the natural world. It is a reminder that the earth is not just a place to live, but a sacred space filled with spirits and life forces. The reverence for Manitou fosters a deep respect for nature and an understanding of the delicate balance that sustains all life. Through their beliefs and practices, the Algonquian tribes honor the spirits of the land and the profound connection between humanity and the natural world. When the sun begins to dip below the horizon and the first stars start to sparkle in the desert sky, there is a magic that stirs in the air. It is the presence of Kokopili, a figure of enchanting mystery and profound importance for the Hopi and other southwestern tribes. This flute-playing fertility god, with his curvaceous figure and joyful demeanor, carries with him the essence of life and abundance. Kokopili is not just a deity, he is a symbol of hope and renewal. His flute, gently held and ever-present, is said to play melodies that bring rain, a precious gift in the arid landscape of the southwest. As he dances and plays, his music is believed to stir the clouds and coax the rain from the heavens. The desert, often parched and barren, comes alive with his tunes, transforming into a land of growth and vitality. For the people who revere him, Kokopili is more than a myth, he is a vital force in their daily lives. His presence is a reminder that even in the harshest environments, there is always the possibility of growth and renewal. The sound of his flute is a promise of rain, a signal that the dry earth will soon burst into life. This promise brings a deep sense of relief and joy to those who depend on the land for their survival. Kakopeli's figure is often depicted with a rounded belly and a hunchback, features that are symbols of fertility and abundance. He is a bearer of new life, not only in the sense of rain and crops, but also in the broader sense of well-being and prosperity. His dance is a celebration of life itself, a joyful expression of the cycle of growth and renewal that sustains all living things. The stories of Kokopili are filled with wonder and reverence. He is often portrayed as a wanderer, moving from place to place, spreading his magic and joy wherever he goes. His journeys are not just physical but spiritual, representing the movement of life and the constant potential for change and growth. In every community he visits, he leaves behind a touch of magic, a promise of better days to come. The influence of Kokopili extends beyond the realm of agriculture. He is also associated with music, dance, and love. His flute playing is not just a means of bringing rain, but also a way of connecting with the deeper aspects of human experience. The melodies he plays are said to bring people together, to inspire love and harmony among them. His music is a celebration of life's joys and sorrows, a reminder that even in difficult times, there is always a reason to dance and rejoice. In the art and symbols of the southwestern tribes, Kakopeli's image is a constant presence. His figure is often carved into rocks, painted on pottery, and woven into textiles. 
These depictions are more than mere representations, they are expressions of the deep connection between the people and their fertility god. Each image of Kokopili is a testament to the hope and renewal he brings, a reminder of the life-giving power of his music. The stories and songs about Kokopili are passed down through generations, each one adding to the rich tapestry of his legend. Elders tell tales of his adventures and his impact on the land, weaving his magic into the fabric of their cultural heritage. For the Hopi and other southwestern tribes, Kokopili is not just a figure of the past, but a living, breathing force that continues to influence their lives and their connection to the land. When Kakopili's name is spoken, it carries with it a sense of wonder and respect. He is more than just a myth, he is a symbol of the enduring connection between people and nature. His presence is a reminder of the beauty and power of life, and his music is a celebration of the possibilities that lie ahead. As his flute plays its gentle melodies, the world around him comes alive, filled with the promise of rain, growth, and good fortune. In the quiet moments of the night, when the desert is still and the stars shine brightly, the spirit of Kokopili dances on the breeze. His music, though silent to the ear, is felt in the heart, a reminder that even in the most challenging times, there is always the potential for renewal and joy. The legend of Kokopili continues to inspire and uplift, a testament to the enduring power of hope and the beauty of life. In the heart of Mesoamerica, where ancient civilizations wove their stories into the very fabric of their existence, there exists a powerful figure whose name still echoes through the ages, Quetzalcoatl, the Feathered Serpent. This magnificent deity, with his serpent body adorned with vibrant feathers, embodies a blend of earth and sky, creation and wisdom, weaving together a legacy that touches the soul. Quetzalcoatl is more than just a deity, he is a symbol of life's intertwined forces. His serpentine form, with feathers that glint like jewels under the sun, represents the union of the terrestrial and the celestial. To the ancient Mesoamerican people, he was a living bridge between the physical world and the divine. His presence was a constant reminder of the sacred balance that sustains life. The tales of Quetzalcoatl are filled with wonder and reverence. He is often depicted as a wise and benevolent figure, bringing knowledge and culture to humanity. His teachings were said to have brought the arts, agriculture, and the calendar to the people. Through his wisdom, he guided them in harmony with the earth, ensuring that their lives were rich and fruitful. His influence was seen in every aspect of daily life, from the way crops were planted to the rituals that honored the gods. The Feathered Serpent's connection to creation is profound. In the myths, he is often credited with shaping the world and creating humanity. His divine breath was believed to have brought life to the first beings, and his serpent form slithered through the primordial chaos, bringing order and beauty to the universe. Quetzalcoatl's role in creation underscores his importance as a source of life and vitality. He represents the cycles of nature, the ebb and flow of the seasons, the planting and harvesting of crops, the birth and death of life. But Quetzalcoatl's story is not just about creation, it is also about wisdom and transformation. He is often depicted as a deity who bestows knowledge and enlightenment. His teachings were not just about survival, but about living a life in harmony with the cosmos. His wisdom guided the people in their spiritual practices, teaching them how to live in balance with the world around them. Through his lessons, they learned to appreciate the beauty of nature, the importance of ritual, and the power of the divine. The reverence for Quetzalcoatl was not limited to his role as a creator and teacher. He was also seen as a protector and a source of hope. His presence was a reassurance that the gods were watching over them, guiding them through times of difficulty and uncertainty. The Feathered Serpent was a symbol of protection, a guardian who ensured that the cosmic order was maintained and that the people were safe from harm. In the rich tapestry of Mesoamerican mythology, Quetzalcoatl is joined by other serpent-like deities, each adding their own thread to the divine narrative. These deities, with their serpentine forms and divine attributes, symbolize the deep connection between the earth and the heavens. They embody the principles of life and death, creation and destruction, reflecting the complex and ever-changing nature of existence. The Feathered Serpent's impact extended beyond his own stories. His influence can be seen in the myths and rituals of various Mesoamerican cultures. 
Temples and statues dedicated to Quetzalcoatl stand as testaments to his significance. The imagery of the feathered serpent is woven into the art and architecture of ancient civilizations, a constant reminder of the divine presence that guided and nurtured their lives. The legacy of Quetzalcoatl is a powerful reminder of the enduring connection between humanity and the divine. His stories evoke a sense of wonder and reverence, touching the heart with their profound messages of creation, wisdom, and protection. The Feathered Serpent continues to inspire and uplift, a symbol of the timeless bond that exists between the earthly and the divine. As the ancient Mesoamerican people looked to the sky and the earth, they saw Quetzalcoatl's influence in every aspect of their lives. His presence was a source of strength and inspiration, a divine guide who helped them navigate the complexities of existence. The Feathered Serpent's legacy lives on, a beacon of hope and wisdom that continues to resonate with those who seek a deeper understanding of the world and their place within it. Imagine standing alone in the vast open plains or the barren desert, where the wind sweeps across the land with a powerful whisper. In these sacred landscapes, the wind is more than just a breeze, it is a living, breathing spirit that carries messages from the divine. These wind spirits, revered across many Native American traditions, are seen as both messengers and guardians, their presence felt in every gust and swirl. In the plains and desert regions, where the wind shapes the very essence of life, these spirits hold a profound significance. Their whispers and howls are not mere sounds, but are believed to be the voices of the ancestors, guiding and protecting those who live beneath their breath. Each gust carries a story, a warning, or a blessing, weaving the fabric of life with threads of unseen power. The wind spirits are seen as guardians of the natural world. Their role is to maintain the balance between the elements, ensuring that the seasons flow harmoniously and that life flourishes. In times of crisis or uncertainty, the wind spirits are called upon for their guidance. Their arrival is marked by a sudden change in the wind's direction or intensity, a sign that the spirits are communicating. The plains and desert peoples have deep reverence for these spirits. To them, the wind is a symbol of freedom and change, a reminder that life is always in motion. The spirits of the wind are seen as embodiments of change itself, their movements mirroring the ever-shifting landscape. Their presence is a testament to the interconnectedness of all things, a reminder that nothing is static and everything is in a constant state of flux. In many traditions, ceremonies are held to honor the wind spirits. These rituals often involve offerings and prayers sent to the spirits on the wings of the wind. The act of making these offerings is a way of showing respect and asking for the spirits' favor. The people believe that through these ceremonies, they can communicate their needs and desires, seeking guidance and protection from the spirits who roam the vast expanses of the plains and desert. The wind spirits are also seen as messengers of the divine. Their voices carry the wisdom of the ages, imparting knowledge and insight to those who listen. Stories of the wind spirits often include tales of their intervention in critical moments, helping heroes on their quests or providing solace to those in need. Their whispers can be both soothing and startling, carrying messages that are meant to inspire and transform. In the arid desert, where life clings to the edge of survival, the wind spirits are especially revered. The wind is a source of life-giving moisture, a rare and precious gift in the harsh desert environment. The people see the wind spirits as essential to their survival, bringing the rains that nourish the land and sustain the people. The wind is a vital force, carrying the promise of life in its gentle, persistent whispers. The wind spirits' influence extends beyond their physical presence. They are believed to have a hand in shaping the spiritual world as well. Their breezes are seen as carrying prayers and intentions to the heavens. Their whispers are conduit between the earthly and the divine. Through the wind, the people can communicate with the spirit world, seeking guidance, blessings, and protection. The presence of the wind spirits is a constant reminder of the unseen forces that govern the world. Their movements shape the land, their whispers guide the people, and their breath sustains life. To the people of the plains and desert, the wind is not just a natural phenomenon, but a sacred presence, a living embodiment of the divine. As the wind dances across the landscape, it carries with it the essence of the spirits, their presence felt in every gust and whisper. 
The wind spirits, with their unseen but deeply felt influence, are a powerful reminder of the sacredness of life and the ever-present connection between the physical and spiritual realms. They are the guardians of the natural world, the messengers of the divine, and the eternal breath that sustains all things. Imagine the stillness of a moonlit night by a lake where the water shimmers with an ethereal glow. In the reflections of the water, you might glimpse spirits that shape the very nature of life and danger. Water, in Native American myths, is not just a source of life, but a realm of powerful spirits that embody both beauty and peril. Among these spirits are Naya, the graceful water spirit of the California tribes, and Umpthi, the fearsome serpent from Lakota lore. Naya, the water spirit revered by the tribes of California, embodies the serene and life-giving aspects of water. She is often depicted as a beautiful, ethereal being who moves with the grace of a flowing stream. Naya is seen as a guardian of rivers, lakes, and springs, nurturing life and ensuring the balance of nature. Her presence is felt in the gentle ripple of a pond and the soothing flow of a stream. To the people who want Naya, water is a sacred gift, her spirit a reminder of the life-sustaining power of nature. The California tribes tell stories of Naya with deep reverence, her influence apparent in the way they treat their waterways. Her spirit is believed to bring fertility and abundance, blessing the land with crops and ensuring the prosperity of their communities. In these stories, Naya's kindness is often reflected in the clarity and purity of water, symbolizing health and well-being. The ceremonies and rituals dedicated to her are filled with respect and gratitude, acknowledging her role in maintaining the delicate balance of life. In contrast, the waters of the Lakota lore hold a different kind of spirit, Umpthi, a monstrous being feared for its destructive power. Umpthi is often depicted as a massive, serpentine creature that dwells in the depths of lakes and rivers. Unlike the nurturing Naya, Umpthi represents the darker side of water, embodying the dangers and unpredictabilities of the natural world. The stories of Umpthi are filled with warnings and lessons about the perils of underestimating the forces of nature. Umpthi's presence in Lakota myths serves as a powerful reminder of the respect that water demands. The creature is said to have the ability to cause floods and drown entire villages, a testament to the formidable strength that water can wield. Tales of Umpthi often involve heroic figures confronting this great beast, symbolizing humanity's struggle against nature's overwhelming power. Through these stories, the Lakota people convey the importance of understanding and respecting the natural world, acknowledging that even the most life-sustaining elements carry inherent risks. The contrast between Naya and Umpthi highlights the dual nature of water in Native American mythology. On one hand, water is a source of life, growth, and nourishment embodied by Naya's benevolent presence. On the other hand, it is a force of danger and destruction as represented by Umpthi's fearsome power. This duality reflects the broader understanding of nature as a balanced system where every element has the potential for both creation and destruction. In their respective ways, both Naya and Umpthi underscore the significance of water in Native American beliefs. Naya's gentle spirit teaches the value of harmony and the blessings that water brings to life. Her stories remind us of the gratitude owed to the sources of our sustenance and the respect required to maintain balance with nature. Umpthi, on the other hand, warns of the dangers that lie beneath the surface, urging caution and reverence for the power that water holds. The water spirits, with their contrasting attributes, play a crucial role in the cultural and spiritual life of Native American peoples. Their stories are woven into the fabric of daily life, influencing how communities interact with their natural surroundings. Whether through the nurturing presence of Naya or the formidable power of Umpthi, these spirits remind us of the profound connection between humans and the elements that sustain and challenge us. As the water flows silently under the moonlight, the spirits of Naya and Umpthi linger in its depths, their stories a testament to the complex and powerful relationship between humanity and the natural world. In every ripple and current, their presence is felt, shaping our understanding of water's role in life and its capacity for both blessing and challenge. When the first light of dawn breaks over the horizon, it carries with it the ancient stories of the sun and moon, celestial beings revered with profound respect and awe by Native American tribes. As the sun ascends into the sky, its radiant presence commands reverence, while the moon, with its gentle glow, 
inspires a quiet, sacred awe. In many Native American traditions, the sun is seen as a powerful deity embodying life, warmth, and the sustaining energy of the world. The sun's journey across the sky is not just a daily event, but a sacred ritual observed with great respect. It is the source of light and heat that makes life possible. In the cosmologies of the Plains tribes, the sun is often depicted as a great being who watches over the land, ensuring the growth of crops and the prosperity of the people. Among the Lakota, the sun is associated with Wakantanka, the great spirit, a central force in their spiritual beliefs. The sun's journey across the sky is seen as a daily affirmation of life cycles and the continuation of the world's balance. Ceremonies and prayers are offered to honor the sun, acknowledging its role as a giver of life and sustainer of all living things. The warmth of the sun is felt as a comforting embrace, a symbol of divine presence and guidance. As night falls and the moon rises, its soft light casts a different kind of magic. The moon is revered as a sacred entity in its own right, representing the feminine aspect of existence. It is seen as a guardian of the night, guiding the cycles of time and the rhythms of nature. For many tribes, the moon is associated with the earth's fertility and the cycles of life. Its phases are closely linked to agricultural practices, guiding planting and harvesting with its changing light. In Navajo tradition, the moon is represented by Changing Woman, a powerful deity who embodies the cycles of life and growth. Her presence is deeply connected to the rhythms of nature and the cycles of the earth. Changing Woman's influence is seen in the moon's phases, which symbolize the stages of life from birth to death and rebirth. The moon's light is thought to carry wisdom and guidance, illuminating the path through the darkness and offering comfort and clarity during times of uncertainty. The connection between the sun and moon in Native American myths is not just about their physical presence in the sky, but also about their roles in maintaining balance and harmony. The sun's heat and light are essential for life, while the moon's guidance through the night represents a calming, nurturing force. Together, they symbolize the balance of opposites, day and night, warmth and coolness, action and reflection. In some cultures, the interplay between the sun and moon is depicted in stories that explain their relationship and the balance they bring to the world. These stories often illustrate how the sun and moon work together to create the cycles of day and night, the changing seasons, and the rhythms of life. The sun's brilliance and the moon's gentle glow are seen as complementary forces, each playing a crucial role in the cosmic order. The reverence for these celestial bodies extends beyond their physical aspects, touching on deeper spiritual meanings. The sun and moon are often seen as symbols of divine presence and guidance, their movements across the sky serving as reminders of the interconnectedness of all things. Their light and energy are believed to carry sacred messages and blessings, influencing the lives of those who honor and respect them. As the sun sets and the moon rises, the stories of these celestial beings continue to inspire awe and reverence. Their presence in the sky is a constant reminder of the sacred rhythms of life and the balance that sustains the world. In every sunrise and moonrise, the ancient traditions and beliefs are carried forward, celebrating the eternal dance of light and shadow, warmth and coolness, day and night. In the stillness of dawn or the quiet of dusk, Native American spirituality paints a vivid picture of the world through the four sacred directions. Each direction is not merely a point on a compass, but a profound embodiment of sacred entities, colors, and attributes that shape the spiritual and everyday life of many tribes. To the east, where the first light of the morning sun touches the earth, is the realm of new beginnings and hope. This direction is often associated with the color yellow, symbolizing the dawning sun and the promise of a new day. It is a time of renewal and growth, where the world awakens with fresh possibilities. In many traditions, the East is revered as the birthplace of the spirit, a place where the divine energy of the sun's first rays brings life and warmth. The sacred beings associated with this direction are often seen as bringers of light and inspiration, guiding individuals toward new opportunities and spiritual enlightenment. Moving to the south, the direction of warmth and abundance, the color red often represents this sacred space. The south is linked to the nurturing energy of summer, a time when the earth is full of life and vitality. It is a direction of strength, passion, and growth. 
the South is also associated with the youthful spirit and the blossoming of potential. In the spiritual practices of many tribes, the South is seen as a place of prosperity and the fulfillment of dreams, where the warmth of the sun blesses all living things with its life-giving energy. The entities connected with the South are honored for their role in ensuring abundance and harmony in the natural world. The West, where the sun sets and the world is bathed in the rich hues of twilight, is often symbolized by the color black. This direction embodies the qualities of introspection, transformation, and the end of cycles. As the day turns to night, it is a time for reflection and release. The West represents the closing of one chapter and the beginning of another, a space where the soul can seek wisdom from the experiences of the day. The beings associated with the West are revered for their role in guiding individuals through times of change and helping them find peace in transitions. The setting sun is seen as a gateway to the spiritual realm, where the darkness of night offers a space for renewal and inner growth. Finally, to the north, where the cold winds blow and the land is blanketed in snow, the color white often represents this direction. The north is a symbol of clarity, endurance, and purity. It is associated with the wisdom of age and the stability provided by the earth. The north is a direction of strength and resilience, where the harshness of winter brings a time of rest and contemplation. The beings of the north are honored for their guidance in maintaining balance and stability, ensuring that the cycle of life continues harmoniously. In this sacred space, the cold is seen not as a harsh force, but as a necessary element for preserving the equilibrium of nature. Each of these directions holds its own sacred place in the spiritual world, weaving together a tapestry of meaning and purpose. The four sacred directions are more than just points on a map, they are integral to the spiritual and daily lives of many Native American tribes. They offer a way to understand the world, guiding individuals in their journey through life with wisdom, protection, and harmony. The colors and attributes associated with each direction are not merely symbolic, but reflect the deep reverence and connection that people have with their environment and the spiritual forces that shape their existence. In every direction, there is a story, a lesson, and a sacred entity that reminds us of the balance and beauty of the world around us. Whether it is the new beginnings of the East, the abundance of the South, the transformation of the West, or the stability of the North, the four sacred directions provide a spiritual compass, guiding and enriching the lives of those who honor them. In the shadowy depths of the forest, where the whispers of the wind carry ancient tales, the bear emerges as a figure of profound reverence and awe. For many Native American tribes, particularly the Haudenosaunee, the bear is more than just a mighty creature, it is a sacred symbol of strength, protection, and healing. From the very first light of dawn, as the forest awakens, the bear moves with a majestic grace that commands respect. Its massive form, powerful yet gentle, embodies a raw and primal strength that many tribes look to for inspiration. The bear's strength is not just physical but spiritual, a symbol of resilience and fortitude. To face a challenge with the spirit of the bear is to confront it with unwavering courage and determination, a lesson passed down through generations. The Haudenosaunee hold the bear in particularly high regard, weaving its image into their stories and ceremonies. In their traditions, the bear is seen as a guardian, a protector who watches over their people. The bear's presence is a reminder of the importance of safeguarding one another and standing strong against adversity. It is said that when the bear roams the forest, it carries with it the protective power of the ancestors, ensuring that the land and its people remain safe and secure. But the bear's role extends beyond mere protection. It is also a symbol of healing. The bear's connection to the earth and its natural rhythms is seen as a source of profound wisdom. In the Haudenosaunee belief, the bear's ability to hibernate and emerge rejuvenated is a powerful metaphor for healing and renewal. Just as the bear retreats into its den to rest and recover, so too can people find solace and restoration in times of need. The bear teaches the value of taking time for oneself, of seeking out quiet and solitude to heal both body and spirit. In ceremonies, the bear often takes center stage, its presence invoked in rituals that seek to harness its protective and healing qualities. Stories of the bear are told with reverence, passed down through generations as a way of honoring this sacred animal. 
These stories often emphasize the bear's role as a guide, a teacher who helps people navigate the trials of life with wisdom and strength. The connection between the bear and the Haudenosaunee is also reflected in their ceremonial practices. Bear dances and songs are performed to honor this revered creature, and the bear's spirit is called upon to provide guidance and protection. These rituals are not just acts of devotion, but are deeply woven into the fabric of daily life, reminding the people of the bear's enduring presence and its vital role in their spiritual and physical well-being. As night falls and the forest settles into silence, the bear's legacy continues to resonate. Its strength, protection, and healing powers are a constant source of inspiration, a reminder of the profound connection between the natural world and the spiritual realm. The bear story is a powerful testament to the enduring bond between humanity and the wild, a symbol of the respect and reverence that define the spiritual practices of the Haudenosaunee and many other Native American tribes. In every rustle of the leaves and every shadow cast by the moonlight, the bear's presence is felt. Its legacy lives on in the hearts of those who honor it, a sacred reminder of the strength, protection, and healing that it represents. In the heart of the ancient desert, under the vast, star-studded sky, the story of the sacred twins unfolds, a tale of profound balance and harmony that echoes through the traditions of the Navajo and Hopi tribes. These twin entities are not merely characters in a myth, they are embodiments of the very forces that shape existence, illustrating the delicate balance between opposing but complementary elements. As the sun rises over the horizon, casting golden light across the land, the sacred twins come to life in the stories told around the fire. One twin represents the nurturing, life-giving forces, while the other embodies the more challenging, unpredictable aspects of life. Together, they symbolize the duality that defines the world, each bringing their own strengths to the balance of nature and humanity. In the Navajo tradition, these twins are known as Monster Slayer and Born for Water. Monster Slayer, the older twin, is a figure of immense strength and courage. He confronts the great monsters that threaten his people, battling the forces of darkness with unwavering resolve. Born for Water, the younger twin, represents the healing and life-giving aspects of nature. He brings water and fertility to the land, ensuring that the balance of life is maintained. Their complementary roles reflect the Navajo belief in the need for both strength and compassion to achieve harmony. Similarly, the Hopi tribes recount the story of the twin war gods, Pahana and Masoyu. Pahana is the god of peace and fertility, while Masoyu is the god of the underworld and death. Their interactions illustrate the Hopi understanding that life is a constant dance between creation and destruction, growth and decay. They are seen as two sides of the same coin, each necessary for the complete cycle of existence. The sacred twins are more than just symbols, they are revered as powerful forces that influence the natural world and human life. Their stories teach that balance is not achieved through the absence of conflict, but through the integration of opposing forces. In times of struggle, the people look to the sacred twins for guidance, drawing strength from their example of facing challenges with courage and wisdom while also nurturing and protecting what is vital. Ceremonies dedicated to the sacred twins are rich with symbolism. Rituals often involve reenactments of their legendary battles and triumphs, reminding the community of the importance of balance in their lives. Songs and dances celebrate their dual roles, honoring both the light and shadow aspects of their existence. These ceremonies are not merely acts of devotion, but are woven into the fabric of daily life, serving as a constant reminder of the lessons the sacred twins embody. As dusk settles over the land, casting long shadows across the landscape, the influence of the sacred twins remains ever-present. Their stories resonate through the generations, a testament to the enduring power of balance and harmony. The twins remind the people that even in the face of adversity, there is beauty in the struggle and strength in the unity of opposing forces. Their legacy is a poignant reminder of the delicate balance that sustains life, a balance that must be respected and cherished. In every sunrise and sunset, in the changing seasons and the cycles of the moon, the presence of the sacred twins is felt. They are a living embodiment of the harmony that the Navajo and Hopi strive to maintain in their relationship with the world and with one another. 
In the quiet stillness of dawn, a timeless tale of creation breathes life into the world, whispering through the rustling leaves and the soft ripple of the waters. The Turtle Island creation story, cherished by numerous Native American tribes, is not just a myth, it is a powerful reminder of how the world began, a narrative that resonates with the heartbeat of the earth itself. Long ago, when the world was still emerging from the void, a great and powerful being, often depicted as a giant turtle, floated through the endless waters. The sky above was a vast expanse, and the earth was but a dream waiting to be born. This ancient turtle, known as the Great Turtle or Turtle Mother, became the foundation upon which all creation would unfold. Its back was a place of both wonder and possibility, a blank canvas upon which the world's stories would be painted. In the beginning, the world was a chaotic, watery expanse, where only the endless sky and the deep, dark waters existed. The beings who lived in the sky saw that this emptiness was not suitable for life. They decided that something had to be done, so they sent animals to explore the depths below. Among them were the brave creatures like the muskrat, who ventured into the water to find a piece of earth to bring back. This was no small task, the waters were vast and unforgiving. The muskrat, small but determined, dove deeper and deeper, nearly losing hope. Yet, in a final, desperate effort, it brought up a small handful of earth. The sky beings took this precious earth and placed it gently on the back of the great turtle. As the earth settled and spread, the turtle began to grow, and with its growth, so did the land. Mountains rose, valleys formed, and rivers carved their paths through the newly created land. The turtle's back became a lush and fertile place, filled with plants and animals. This land was Turtle Island, the birthplace of all that would follow. It was a sacred place, the very foundation of existence, a living testament to the unity of creation and the power of perseverance. The Turtle Island creation story is more than a tale of how the earth came to be, it embodies deep spiritual truths. The turtle is a symbol of endurance and stability, a creature that carries the weight of the world on its back. Its role in creation signifies the importance of balance and harmony, and the idea that life is built on a foundation of both strength and gentleness. The story speaks to the interconnectedness of all life. Every mountain peak, every river bend, and every forest glade on Turtle Island is a reflection of the turtle's enduring spirit. The land is not merely a place to live, it is a living entity, cherished and respected. The creation story teaches that humans are part of this great tapestry, bound by a sacred relationship with the earth. As the sun sets and the twilight deepens, the legacy of Turtle Island continues to inspire and guide. It reminds us that even in the face of uncertainty and challenge, there is always hope and possibility. The Great Turtle's journey from the watery depths to the creation of land is a powerful symbol of transformation and renewal. In every ripple of the river and every rustle of the leaves, the story of Turtle Island endures, echoing through the generations. It is a story that binds people to their past, to each other, and to the land they call home. Through the sacred myth of the Turtle Island creation, the world is not just a place of existence, but a living testament to the enduring spirit of creation and the deep, unbreakable connection between all forms of life.